Hey, what's up guys? Aaron Kubitz, personal trainer, functional aesthetics CC, helping average guys perform better inside and outside the gym. So today is the second in a three parts installment uh, where I'm going to be talking about exercises you can do to keep your shoulders healthy. Again, the purpose of this channel is to provide you with information to help you to design workout programs to either build muscle, lose body fat, a combination of those two, or to help you improve your athletic performance, and also to help you prevent getting injured along that journey, and if you do get injured, to help you uh, learn how you can work around those injuries. If any of those things are interesting to you and would be useful on your fitness journey, go ahead and click subscribe in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, and without further ado, we will get into the video. Okay, so last week I had talked about uh, a series of different exercises that you can do to help you improve your shoulders. I talked about how uh, strengthening your rotator cuff is not the first place you want to start if you want healthy shoulders. I talked about how your shoulder health actually stems from the your postural health in general, specifically your the health of your thoracic spine, your lower back or your upper back, uh, strengthening up your. Uh, lower trapezius, your middle traps, and then also loosening chronically tight uh, areas in the body as well to make that process easier and so that we can restore balance to the shoulder joint. Um, I talked about how oftentimes people will train their back by doing pull-ups and lat pull-downs. Not a bad idea. However, if you're doing too much vertical pulling, you're emphasizing your lats, this is going to cause sometimes this internal rotation of the shoulders, which is going to further uh, increase the problems that many people already have from sitting in a car for long periods of time, sitting in a truck for long periods of time, or sitting behind a desk. So the best thing that you can do for healthy shoulders is to have a well-balanced workout routine to begin with, getting enough sleep, managing your stress, and getting quality nutrition, and not too, putting too much volume, too much intensity, too soon into your workout. With that being said, many people are often already out of, out of balance. So before we can go and start constructing this balanced routine, or before they're gonna get the optimal results from that routine, we oftentimes have to do extra volume or extra things to help correct that and bring you back into a state of balance. The same thing with like nutrition, right? If you've been way out of balance one way, perhaps eating a ton of you know refined grains, processed sugars, pop, all this kind of stuff, alcohol, we might have to swing to the other extreme of the dietary spectrum so that you're taking yourself from here more towards a state of balance and over time, we get that needle to hover right down in the middle where we want it to be, which would be more or less a balanced diet. Same thing here. We might have to reduce the amount of training that you're doing for pull-ups, push-ups, bench presses, curls, things like that um, in the beginning and work more on other exercises to help you uh, regain that state of balanced shoulder health and then we can start training in a more balanced fashion once we achieve that state of equilibrium. Alright guys, so as with last week's video, we're going to start off with the first exercise is going to be a mobility exercise to help to loosen up the areas that are typically going to be tight. So last week we worked on two mobility exercises. One was to help to loosen up the thoracic spine to help to uh, make it more mobile to then go and work the lower trapezius and do your scapular rows and things like that. We also worked on stretching out the lats to uh, enable you to have more mobility in the shoulder joint because the lats oftentimes will be overpowering some of your weaker muscles, especially if they've been neglected. So another common muscle that is often overpowering and tight is the chest muscles. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can stretch your chest, but a super simple, easy way to uh, stretch not only your chest, but also the kind of the entire shoulder girdle is just doing stick rotations, or at least that's what I call them. You can also do this with a resistance band to give you a little added uh, work for the rotator cuff in you know this side to side of this frontal plane. But if you have a nice PVC pipe or a broomstick handle, if you're a shorter person, um, basically you want to be holding that pipe, uh, you know. The closer your hands are together, the harder it's going to be, the more of a stretch, you, you, more mobility you're going to have to have. And of course, uh, if you have your hands shoulder width apart, I don't think most people actually, I don't even know if it's, I don't think it's actually anatomically possible to do a complete rotation around. But generally, if you start out in a, a snatch grip position, if you're going to do like a barbell snatch for like Olympic lifting, which would be to have the bar sitting in your hip flexor crease when you're standing straight up. So however far apart your arms have to be for that. Then what you're gonna do from there is taking a deep breath through your nose. 
raise it up overhead, and then go to the point where you just start feeling a, a nice good stretch, pause for a second, and then exhale. Remember the purpose here is not to force that mobility. The purpose is to allow your body to relax into it. Oftentimes, you have to sit in a position for you know 10 to 20 seconds to allow the Golgi tendon apparatus that protects the muscle spindle to uh, to let it know that hey, we're not rapidly stretching this muscle, so there's not going to be a big risk of injuring this muscle from a rapid uh, stretch in the muscle, which could uh, potentially tear it. Right? Uh, which often happens if you're doing sprinting, you pull a hamstring muscle. Right? So. You want to just ease into it, and every rotation, hopefully, you can go a little bit farther. So, and just kind of camp out in that stretch position. Feel it out. Allow yourself to get that mind-muscle connection. That's another benefit of doing stretching. It helps you to get a good uh, mind-muscle connection going there. In fact, when you are bodybuilding, I like to refer to bodybuilding as essentially uh, stretching under load, right? Um, so, like especially like you're doing squats, you want to do those deep squats. Pause at the bottom. Feel that stretch in the muscles. Come back up. And really, same thing if you're doing, you know, chest flies, if you're doing, you know, the biceps curls, we get to the bottom, feel that stretch briefly, bring it back up, feel it stretch briefly, bring it back up. Even if you're doing something like cheat curls, right, you're coming, you're coming to the bottom, right, and you're lowering it a little bit slower than you do it did on the concentric to really feel that stretch, and then cheat it back up to the top. Feel that stretch, lower it down nice and control under stretch, cheat it back up to the top. So even when you're doing those cheat ones, you're not just flopping that weight all over the place. You always want to be under control. And again, lifting for the best revolts, re, uh, results for hypertrophy, you want to be focusing on getting that good stretch, uh, squeeze it back out. I like to think about it as using a bellows, right? You're breathing in, allowing that bellows to fully expand. And then when it's fully expanded or stretched out, right, like the muscle, and coming down, the bellows is filling up, full expansion, the balloon is all the way filled up, now you're, squeeze it all back out again. Okay, so the next exercise that we can do here, uh, after we've loosened up the chest and stuff, because if the chest is tight, it's going to cause things to kind of go like this, right? We got that loosened up. Now we want to work on a little external rotation of the shoulders, right? Bring those shoulders down and back. This is a good one to do in conjunction with scapular rowing and also some other exercises that I'm going to be showing you later on in this video. Um, and then right after this one, I'm going to show you an exercise that's similar to this you can do with no weights whatsoever. So. It's actually two parts to this exercise. You can do a scarecrow or a Cuban press. So the scarecrow or Cuban press is essentially a scarecrow with an overhead press. Uh, but what you're going to do is uh, grab the bar with your hands spaced out far enough so that when you bring your arms up, so the upper arms are at like parallel to the floor like this, that you got about a 90 degree bend in your elbow. From there, you're going to Bring your arms up like this. Now you could do this with dumbbells, and I actually prefer to do that because the angle's a little better. I have to go a little higher than I like with this to avoid hitting my head. Now, a good, another good way to do this is actually bent over like this, because then gravity is actually giving you a better angle on that supraspinatus in your rotator cuff. And the Cuban press, you're basically bringing it up from here, externally rotate it over your head, bring it over your head like that. 
So it's like, and then that way you're helping to keep, you're doing your pressing with your shoulders, but you're also working that backside and helping to strengthen that all up as well. If you're not already doing that, try these out. I'm sure you're going to feel that that whole shoulder just feels nice, warm, and that good fuzzy feeling of getting that nice pump in all those little muscles in there. All right, so the body weight version of this, and it's a great way to really nail down your technique, make sure you're actually using the right muscles, you know, because a lot of times if you're starting out with a new exercise, if particular muscles are really weak, oftentimes you will end up not doing the exercise correctly because you'll be like, man, this weight is so light, and you'll just naturally be overpowering it with your already the muscles that are already strong. So a good way to get around that is to do an exercise like the one that I'm going to show you here, which actually forces you to do it the right way. All right, so this exercise here is called a wall slide. Now, as you get more advanced, you could, in theory, use resistance bands, uh, really light, you know, like therabands, like a physical therapist might use, to actually make this exercise a little bit harder and a little bit more difficult. But in the beginning, you'll find that most, for most people, it's plenty hard enough with no weight whatsoever. So the first thing you want to do is go back yourself up to a wall, and if you're really mobile, you can usually put your feet, your heels right up against the wall and do it like that. If you're not, bend your knees a little bit, getting kind of sitting down in a position like this. And what you want to do is rotate your tailbone under so your back is flat to the wall. You want to take the curvature out of your lower back when you're doing this. And then you want to tuck your chin in, bring your chin back to the wall. You're strengthening up your, uh, your SCM muscles here. Um, that bring your chin down so it's back to the wall like that. Then again, arms, upper arms are going to be parallel to the floor. Got your back flat to the wall. Hopefully your chin's nice and tucked as well. Now you're going to rotate up like this. You should already be feeling a nice squeeze in your upper and upper back, especially in that lower trapezius area, middle trapezius area. Now from here, what you're going to do, keeping your back flat to the wall, you're going to take in a deep breath and then exhale as you raise your arms up. Now the key here is you got to keep the back of your elbow, your entire forearm, and the back of your hand up against the wall. As soon as either one of those start coming away from the wall, that's as high as you go. So you know, raise up, hold, and then start breathing. And if you can go a little higher, go a little higher. Keep breathing like that. That'll totally fire up your back. Make it nice and, you know, you, you just feel muscles you've probably never felt before back there and get you really nice and tight uh, in that area. And it's going to help really build that strong mind-muscle connection for all the other uh, actually weighted exercises you're doing with dumbbells, resistance bands, etc. All right, so our next exercise here is one that was popularized by Jeff Cavalier with AthleanX.com. Um, and this one serves the same purpose as doing scapular rows from a pull-up bar. And uh, it's a little bit easier, perhaps. Um, hits it from a little bit angle because you have a longer lever arm, which is going to make it more difficult. So these 10 pounders, I haven't done this actually in a while, so 10 pounders might even be too heavy. Now, you can do this with your chest supported on a bench, so you can really focus on that. The thing is, unlike a barbell row, you're not really going to be using so much weight that fatiguing your lower back is going to be an issue for this exercise. So I'm not going to use the bench. You just need to bend over so that your torso is roughly between 30 to 45 degree angle from the floor. And again, why it's called a Y raise is because your arms, when you raise them up, they tend to form a natural Y shape. They don't tend to go straight out to the side. They come up straight in the scapular plane is what we call it, right? So what you're going to do, breathe in. Roll the shoulders down and back, and then raise those arms up. Now you notice, every time that I'm coming back down to the bottom, I'm pausing, taking a deep breath, rolling those shoulders down and back, holding my breath, and then exhale as I bring it up. 
So you want to reset yourself on every one so that you're making sure that you're getting a good solid rep on every rep. If you're not pausing to get your breathing in, oftentimes running out of oxygen can be the limiting factor. And that's a problem because these smaller muscle groups are much more endurance or aerobic ones, right? Which means they're going to rely much more on oxygen and fatty acids for energy. And so if you're not getting enough oxygen in there, that is going to be a big problem in your ability to perform the exercise effectively. Okay, so our next exercise here is what I like to call a bent over high pull. The reason being is there is an exercise in Olympic lifting to help you to break through some strength plateaus for doing a barbell clean, right, where you're coming like this, you're bouncing it, you're essentially extending the hips, and then you're doing a forceful shrug like this to bring it up, right? So this is the pull sections. So for sometimes, if you're like trying to break through a plateau, sometimes you can put a little heavier weight than you actually use come like this and then shrug it up, come back down, shrug it up like that, right? And that is really excellent for building up your traps in a very functional, athletic sort of manner. It's gonna build a lot of power, right? Now, I like to create this into somewhat of a multi-joint or a little bit more isolated movement and to also really emphasize that back of the shoulder portion, especially uh, down, it's actually uh, the main area it hits is actually a little bit lower down, like right around in here, in that lower middle traps area, uh, top of the erector spinae. Um, when you're doing this, which many times, like that medial border of your, of your scapula, right? Right along where the inside borders of your shoulder blades uh, go along your spine, which oftentimes doesn't get hit very much. So before you do this exercise, I really highly recommend though, you've been doing wall slides consistently for a while, maybe you've been doing those scarecrows and you're doing the stick rotations, all that kind of stuff, doing the Y raises, doing the scapular rows, because this one is a little bit more technical to get it right. So what you're gonna be doing, um, and because you're using your arms and your back and, all the, and your legs and everything, it's a technically to a certain degree a full body movement so you're going to be able to use significant a little bit more weight with this in fact i generally use you know 50 60 pounds when i'm doing it um, but to go slow motion with this so you can see how it's going so basically what you're doing is you're bringing it up and you see how my elbow is kind of bending at the same time so you can see you know if you're doing a scarecrow right like this or you're doing a cuban press it's kind of like that same movement but instead of pressing it up over your head like that, you're just stopping here, coming up. And so your arm, and you're using the momentum to kind of rotate under, and just your rotator cuff is essentially locking it into place, but this part of your back here is doing the majority of the work. So in fast motion, it looks something like this. So you can see it from the front. And then from the side, like that. Now people look at this and they're like, man, that looks like it's going to kill my shoulders. And actually, the shoulder is just the pivot point, and the main area that's getting worked is, an, is actually that part of your back right here, and even your hamstrings are, you know, assisting to stabilize it as well. So that's another exercise, a little bit more advanced, but I figured I'd include it in here too after you've become very comfortable with everything else you're doing. Okay, so our last exercise of the day is an exercise that's going to help you to primarily work the other two uh, posterior rotator cuff muscles, so your infraspinatus and your teres minor. So, and this is what I, I call a W raise. Now, you can do it just the W part, or you can actually uh, combine it with a Y raise, and it'll actually give you, really fire up your back. So, let's just show you how it goes first. So I like to set this maybe somewhere between hip height and knee height. So maybe like three to four inches higher than your knees. And then you're gonna position your elbows down to your sides like this, and it's gonna start from the front and you're going to pull back just like that, just rotating like this, okay? 
So roll those shoulders down and back. Pull it back. I like to do this if I'm doing a lot of pull-ups. Uh, it really tends to help me kind of get a little bit more balance to my to my upper back. Now, this one, I'd actually probably lower it down a little bit further than it is even, even there, uh, so I can really emphasize that external rotation uh, portion. Now, this band here is about a 30 pound band. It's a little bit too heavy for me to combine it with a Y weight, so I'd lighten it up, and then when you get to here, you hold that, and you would try to hold, not allow your hands to move forward, and to just push straight up over your head like this, and so as it goes up, it's going to get harder and harder because your arms want to come forward like that. It's going to really help to strengthen up that back side. So it's a, a different variation of the Y raise. And so if you're short for time, I definitely go with this because then you can get the Y raise all in one instead of having to do two separate movements to get your Y raise and have two different setups. All right, guys, that concludes today's video. Hopefully you found the information useful and informative and you can start incorporating that into your own shoulder workouts, your own shoulder routines to ensure that you are able to lift and grow stronger for as long as possible. If you liked today's video, go ahead and hit the like button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. As I said before, this channel is all about helping you design workout programs to help you build more muscle, shed fat, increase your athleticism, and also to help you to avoid the common injuries uh, that uh, off pop up in the gym or in sports and also if you do get those injuries how to work around those injuries should they occur if you liked if all that stuff sounds good to you go ahead and hit the button in the lower right hand corner of the screen and we'll see you all next time for more health and fitness information